This is what you're going to feel like doing if you ever get audited by the government on your taxes. Life Games is going to show you the top things that the government looks for when they get ready to audit you so that you can avoid it. We are all small business owners at heart, and I'm going to show you how to take care of one of the biggest things you deal with, which is taxes. Let's get into it. What's good, YouTube? It's the all-knowing, all-loving, all-feeling, all-seeing, all-powerful. Damn, just air all everything. Sexy as hell host of the Life Games channel, Lamont Tyson. Back in here with some more consumer advocacy. And if you don't, you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're one of my old school players from the Himalayas, been rocking with me from day one. God bless you. You're a credit to your community. You're a credit to this world. And may God keep valuing you for it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know me, what you need to know is I've done a whole lot of things in my life that make me uniquely qualified to give you guys life gains. You can check out some of my videos in the description link where I was a respiratory therapist. I started a business working with children that have lung problems. I've been a truck driver. I put the truck in a ditch and I survived. I've done interviews with millionaires, billionaires, and politicians. You can check those out. Now I'm doing fitness and I'm also helping people start their YouTube channels. And what does all that have to do with consumer issues? Everything. It's business. It's capitalism. You almost have to be a jack of all trades to really, really make these things move together, which is why I started this channel called the Life Games Channel. Foundation of everything we do is paying taxes, ladies and gentlemen. And this video is about the red flags that the IRS looks at to see if you're paying taxes appropriately, on time, and if you're evading taxes. So these are gonna be your red flags. Number one thing I want you guys to understand, if you make more than $200,000 a year, you have a one in 37 chance of being audited. Ladies and gentlemen, going into business is scary as hell. You know, it is a huge risk. But if you can go through everything you need to to overcome it and be successful, it is probably the best thing you can do to enrich your life. And I know it's scary. It's scary as hell. I've been through it and dealing with taxes and what they're going to do to you really, really makes it bad. And that's when you start getting to divides with people and their politics. And just because me and my wife, we typically are libertarian. I mean, we lean Democrat on social policies and we lean a little bit more Republican on some fiscal issues. But we fully understand why people come to their different viewpoints in politics because we've been through every phase of it. We've gone from poverty to middle class to making six figures and we're trying to get to the next level now. And we've seen all the stuff that goes on. And as minorities, there are things that need to be put in place that the government has done well, as well as business owners. We've seen things that the government just need to get their hands out of it. Either way you look at it, you gotta pay your taxes. So. The number one thing that causes new businesses to go out of business is their tax bills. Now, when I run for office, that's right, sexy as hell hoes may run for office. I'm going to run strictly on a campaign of giving new business startups clemency of not having to worry about taxes for two years, either at the state level, federal level. But we'll try to start with the state because I do believe in small business. That is the engine that keeps this economy going, and I'm tired of seeing politicians pun it down the road. And without further ado, let's go to the sexy as hell jumbotron, and we're gonna see a list of things that are raised red flags. And what do I have, number one? You claim a home office deduction. Now, these are things you can do, and having a home office is something a lot of people do, but when you have one of those, the IRS is going to put your butt under the microscope. You have got to have some documents showing the size of your home. You need to have an area laid out where you're doing your work. You need to have business items in the area. You've got to document well, all right? Number two, you give a lot of money to charity. I guess you would think, oh, admirable. But the IRS want to know, why are you giving so much money to charity? See, here you guys thought that it was all love and roses and... It ain't about that. It's about that money. And if you're giving a lot to the, a lot to charity, they want to know where's this money coming from. Especially a lot of people give to charities and they don't have this money in a bank account. And the IRS wants to know because they want their money. The IRS is the only entity 
that can throw you in jail for not paying their bill. Ain't that some fucked up shit? You deduct unreimbursed business expenses. That one's self-explanatory, guys. If you deduct something, you've got to have a record of what it was and what you're using it for that has to do with the business, okay? <laughs> you use digital currency. My young folks, my millennials, they're trying to use Bitcoin, oh, damn, excuse me, Bitcoin and all those other currencies. Government ain't having that. It's too easy to masquerade those different things and they get lost in the system. They ain't playing that, so be careful about that. Not reporting taxable income. So let's just say you get um, 1099, you've done some miscellaneous work for somebody and it comes up to more, I think the threshold is $699 and it's more than that. The government wanna know it because they want their cut. <laughs> you know, craziest Ponzi scheme in the world. But having said that, ladies and gentlemen, the government does do some positive things with your money. My argument is we as everyday people just don't have enough control and how we spend that money. We need to have more control in how the government spends that money other than just voting, in my opinion. Number seven, you claim losses on day trading. I don't care whether you guys are using Scott Trade, eBay Trade, Wesco Trade, Jack of All Trades. When you lose, the government is not letting you get away with that unless you are one of those Wall Street banker cats that get away with murder. I mean, they get away with more than Donald Trump. They can come by, take your cat, cut his legs off, throw him on the side of the road, and they won't go to jail for it. They have the money and the sophistication and the lawyers surrounding them to get away with a lot of this stuff. But you, as an everyday guy, you do not want the hassle of people beating at your door to audit you, and you can't give an account for it. Claiming rental losses. Owning real estate and renting it out is a great way to build wealth over time. It's a great way to have um, cash flow and it's a great way for you to have some income when you retire. You know, you have a home that you could sell if you want to do it. And if you don't want to sell it, you still have those little streams of income coming in to supplement your income. But they're not letting you count the losses. That's just one of those things you just got to deal with if a tenant comes in and trashes your house. The best way to deal with this is to screen the tenant as best. Put that tenant under a microscope the size of Jupiter and make sure through all accounts, even by doing that, you still might get someone who's one bad apple. But for the most part, you've got to screen that tenant to make sure that they're a good tenant and you'll save this. Me and my wife are leasing a commercial property and our tenant has been excellent. You know, we screened her, she's done a good job and we've been happy so far. Deducting business meals, travel, and entertainment. You can do that, but you, you got to keep a record of it. You know, when I was young trying to come up in business, these guys would take me on dinner dates and say, leave their business card and say, business paid for this. It ain't that simple. Uh, my CPA has said you need to document who you was with, put it on the receipt, why you need to spend it from your business account. And that way you can do it. But if the government sees too many of these, and it looks like you just taking your sweetie pie, your paramour, and your jump off out to dinner on the business dime. They can come in there and flag you. And if they get you under audit, ladies and gentlemen, it is a painstaking process. Dude came in to audit me and my wife. And I mean, his dirty ass made us sick. He was in there trying to tell us how to run business. Well, you know his ass ain't never ran no business. How the hell are you going to tell me you work for the government how to run a business, dude? He was just there to collect his money. You get an incentive for collecting the money. So I'm trying to help you guys avoid getting caught up in this menagerie. And number 10 and the last one on my list, you claim 100% business use of a vehicle and your crazy ass only got one car. It ain't gonna fly. Best thing to do is they've got apps now where you can document the mileage you use day to day for your business or you can be old school like I did. I have a little calendar I stuck in the driver's side of my door. I would start my daily mileage. I would write down everywhere I go that deals with my business and I would end it when I'm done with whatever I'm doing with the business. The best way to keep up with that. And also using mileage is probably the greatest advantage to someone who's doing a lot of high miles throughout the day um, instead of using it to deduct the other way on your car, all right? Well guys, that's gonna do it for another consumer video. 
trying to help you guys make those life gains. I want you to succeed and I want you to be successful because everyone can do it, but you've got to avoid these crazy pitfalls. Don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe. Go out there and get yourself a life gain. Always check the video description box below my video. Do business with me. Check out my affiliates. Check out my past videos. And until next time, we will see you on the next Sexy as Hell video.